Hello students, hope you are uh, doing fine and you are having fun doing this course with me. This is uh, unit 3 where we see the meaning and principles of organization or organizing as a function. We look at formal and informal organization and we also learn about decentralization and centralization that exists in a, any organization. After completing the, this unit, you will be able to recall the meaning and definition of organizing, explain the principles of organizing, describe the formal and informal organizations and explain decentralization and also centralization that exist in any organization. Organizing is an important function of management just like function, planning. It is concerned with allocation of duties and responsibilities among the people so that work will be carried out systematically, which means giving others in the organization work so that it gets done in an efficient manner, but the work must be given based on certain aspects. It simply means arrangement of the required resources and then using those resources to conduct various activities. Let us look at a definition. This may look like a big definition, but it is a pretty simple to understand. Louis Allen defines organizing as the process of identifying and grouping of the work to be performed, defining and delegating responsibility and authority and establishing a pattern of relationship for the purpose of enabling people to work most effectively together in accomplishing the objectives. Now, if you break down this definition, so what is organizing? It is a process, process of identifying and grouping the work to be performed, defining and delegating responsibility and authority. Defining means giving it in written or in words as to what it means for the person to be responsible and authority to have an authority. Delegating the work that means distributing the work according to the responsibility and authority. And also establishing a pattern of relationship for the purpose of enabling people to work most effectively in accomplishing the objectives. We have seen earlier when we talk about management it is always a teamwork where a lot of people are involved at different levels, but they must all come together to conduct the activity or do the work in a very effective and efficient manner. Because only if this happens can we say the objectives have been achieved. So hopefully this is a simple uh, definition. It says organizing is the process of identifying and grouping the work, defining and delegating responsibility and authority and establishing a pattern of relationship so that people work together and achieve the objectives. According to Henry Fayol, to organize means to provide everything that is needed for the smooth function that is the raw material, the tool, the money or the capital personnel. That means in short we can say the man and the material resources that are required. If all of these can be provided that means whatever planning has been done now can be actually start you can start actually working on it to start organizing it. Let us look at the principles of organizing. The first principle says the principle of objectives that means organizations must have well defined objectives and everyone must be aware of these objectives because when you work in an organization you must know what it works for, what you need to achieve. Moreover, there should be unity amongst the objectives also. They cannot be scattered all over the place, they must all make sense together. The second principle is the principle of specialization. That means, in order for efficiency in working, it is necessary to have a division of work. Everybody must get some work, but the work must be distributed in such a manner that it takes care of the abilities and skills of the person. If you are good at a certain job aspect, you will do the work more efficiently. So when you, whenever you are thinking of organizing the work, it must be according to specialization of the people. The third principle is the principle of coordination. As we know it is a teamwork, so all activities of the department as well as the individual must be linked to one another. Nobody can work in isolation, it has to be a coordinated effort. Continuity. 
organizing like planning is a continuous process because if plan this follows planning so that means even if planning is continuous organizing must also be carried out in a continuous manner span of control span of control is another principle which means the number of subordinates who can be effectively managed by and supervised by a manager there should be a limit on this they say next principle is the authority and responsibility it's a very interesting combination one without the other cannot happen authority is the power to take decisions whereas it is responsibility is the obligation to perform if you have the power to take decisions you must also be responsible for those decisions there must be a proper balance between authority and responsibility the next principle is the principle of unity of command subordinate should get orders only from one boss at a time if you have 10 different bosses you can imagine the kind of situation you are going to be in because the 10 of them are going to give you different commands so there should not be any duplication of orders from which can lead to confusion so with this we have discussed the seven principles of organizing let's go on to the kind of internal structure that exists in any organization one is formal and the other is informal formal organization refers to the structure of well defined jobs having definite authority and responsibility that is what you are talking about when you are talking about any job situation the formal organization rules and regulations are followed by all it is pretty much stable in nature communication between the people also becomes very formal when you talk about a formal structure within an organization now formal is so formal what is how is i informal going to be but before we move on to the informal there are various forms of formal structures like line organization functional organization line and staff organization matrix organization and committee organization we do not have to deal with these in detail at the moment we'll just move on now informal structure refers to the relationship between the people in the organization based on personal attitude emotions likes and dislikes etc formal organization was all about the kind of work that is involved the kind of communication that is was very formal it is very stable this structure is established to develop personal and social relations there are no well defined objectives to be achieved this is not a stable form of structure communication among the people is also very informal so within an organization you have two different structures which exist one which is very formal related to the work aspect of it the other is informal which is more on the relationship between the people in the organization but we all know if the informal structure is a very strong structure formal organization or formal structure of that organization will also be bound to be uh, a very solid one but let me put you on a spot reflection spot informal structure of relationship in any organization is not as important as the formal structure can you comment on it can you think whether this would make sense that informal structure the one that talks about social and personal relationship between employees is not as important as the formal working of the organization think about it reflect and write in your notes the next aspect that we're going to look at is decentralization decentralization seems like a big word right but decentralization means the tendency to disperse decision making authority is decentralization that means a lot of people in an organization having the authority to take a decision rather than all the decisions being taken by one person that becomes decentralization that means decision making powers is vested in many people given to many people rather than one person having a total control in decentralization only broad powers are reserved at the top level and routine authority will be delegated to the lower level so it is not that the top level will take decisions regarding the entire working of the organization 
it is only going to be certain powers which are given to them but whatever happens or needs to be done on a regular basis will be taken care of by the lower level if you look at the definition according to henry fayol everything that goes to increase the importance of the subordinate's role is decentralization everything that goes to reduce it is centralization that means when you say that the power of everyday work or routine work is given to the subordinate that means the subordinate has a say in it so everything that says that subordinate's role is important in any organization is a decentralized organization but whereas every place where the subordinate's role is not considered important at all becomes a centralized organization where the power is resting in the hands of very few people in a decentralized organization the power is distributed among more number of people now let us look at some other factors which affect decentralization the first is cost and importance of decision if the decisions that have to be taken are going to involve a lot of money and they are more important then they should be less decentralization because of the cost and the importance of the decisions that decision must be handled by few people at the top level that is what it means availability of managers if you have enough number of competent managers definitely a decentralized form of working works for you because everybody would be in a position to take decisions desire of uniformity if management wants that the decisions taken are throughout are same or uniform then the level of decentralization reduces because if you want uniformity that means you must have only few people at the top directing the rest of the activity so that becomes less of decentralization so management philosophy is another factor if the management is following a very thorough professional kind of work approach then decentralization becomes more people who have brought, who have a bigger or a larger vision they provide opportunities for the subordinates to be part of the decision making and that leads to better decentralized organization size of the organization matters large organizations have higher degree of decentralization com compared to the smaller organization because you cannot have if you have a large organization you cannot have one person or two people controlling the entire activity you have to delegate your decision making powers to many more there are also some external factors which are responsible for decentralization like the government policies licensing which affect the degree of decentralization now since we have seen the factors let's look at the importance less burden on the top management most definitely by decentralization if you can hand over your powers to other managers in the organization top level management can think and work on different aspects can they can save that time to take up more important areas so it allows quick action because authority is given at all levels distributed at all levels decisions taken would be faster better better results and quick efficiency better efficiency is the result of this motivation because subordinate's role is considered and taken seriously or they are allowed to decision making powers it leads to better motivation in terms of work by the lower and the middle managers because they get to handle responsible work this also facilitates training and development because you have lower and middle management people taking up decisions it improves their skill they also get to learn lot of managerial functions that in this manner it helps in training and development of the staff reduction in wastage right from the beginning you must have seen one of the main aspect of management is to optimally use the resources and reduce the wastage here because of decentralization lower level workers work with more care responsibility and concentration because ultimately they are also responsible for the actions which are going to be taken or the decisions that are going to be made so they will make sure that there is reduction in wastage nothing gets wasted in terms of resources 
expansion and diversification. Decentralization, if you plan to expand your business or your organization and you or you diversify into various areas, you have to make sure the parent organization is given to different managers who can handle different kinds of responsibilities. Because when you talk about more and more work that you're bringing in or more and more areas that you're going out to, you have to have more and more people involved in the decision making aspect. Specialization. Decentralization follows the principle of distribution of work, which says that work should be distributed amongst all, wherein everybody gets a chance to be part of the decision making process. Also leads to better control, because there are span of control here becomes effective because, great, because of the greater decentralization. It leads to better supervision and controlling of performance at all levels. So today we have dealt with one part of the organizing function. In this we have covered the meaning, definition and principles. We have looked at the formal and informal structure that exists in an organization. We have also talked about the factors responsible for decentralization as well as the importance of decentralization. Let us recap and see what we have done so far. Organizing means arrangement of the required dash and ways of conducting dash. In any organization, there are dash types of relationships or structures. When decision making power is given to many, it is called as dash. There must be a balance of dash and dash in any organization. Hopefully, you have got the right answers. Let us see what we have. In the next module, we will continue with more content on the same function, organizing. Organizing needs to be dealt with in little bit of detail and we will do it in the next uh, module. Thank you.